my name is Claire um, and I'm an artist. I work full time as an artist actually and so I'm very lucky I get to work in my studio um, in my garden and I have ducks that come into my studio and I have a three-legged hound dog that helps me. I have a cockatoo that sits on my shoulder and wrecks my artwork. She's a naughty bird and I have another parrot even. And so I've been teaching children and adults for many years and I've been invited to show you all how to make split pin puppets. And I've had so much fun making these split pin puppets. I've actually not been able to stop once I started playing. It's been so much fun. And so I have so many ideas for you all to be able to make your own puppets at home. And you don't even need many materials. Sometimes you can just have a look around what you, what you have at home. You might have some old boxes from the pantry. And if you've got old boxes from the pantry, you could take the contents out and open out the box and then you've got cardboard ready to go. You might have some old cardboard boxes, um, you know, just an old box around. And I think boxes are so, so useful for artists like yourself to use all the time. Um, I love cutting up bits of box and then you've got, um, you've got materials that you can use to make, to make things. You can make, you know, millions of things with boxes. So I think what we'll, what I'm going to imagine is at home you might not have a studio full of art things because I'm lucky, I do. But if you don't, let's all imagine that you've all got a pen in your house. Most people can find a pen or a pencil. And I wanted to show you all all the different things you can do with a pen. This split puppet here, split pin puppet, its mouth opens and shuts, its legs can move. But everything on this puppet, I did with just a black biro, just a pot biro pen. So once you've had a go at this, you could then go, oh, but I've got coloured textures, or I've got pencils, or I've got watercolours. But at the moment, I'm going to assume that everyone's got uh, a biro pen or pencil. Uh, there's a... I've, I've done a sheet here of various um, marks that you can make, but I wanted to show you some different marks that you might want to make. So if we imagine, I'm going to imagine that this is going to be one leg on my puppet. And so I'll do a few of these to show you different types of marks that you could make. We've got four legs. One I'm going to make as a hairy leg. So Hairs, anyone can do hairs. They're just doing like, I don't even need to look while I'm doing hairs. I can just look around the room while I'm doing hairs and you'll start to build up. You might want to have long hair. If you want to have long hair on your, um, on your creature or, or it might be an animal, it might be a person. Another one you could do is, I call it uh, knitting with a pen. When I'm knitting with a pen, I'm making lines, lines of a sort of texture, and I'm just going loopy, 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 round and round and round. And then I'll do another line of that, just underneath the last one. And you can build up, you can build up really lovely textures. If I want to make it darker on the sides, I can just go up and down a little bit with my pen knitting machine. And see, instead of going straight across, if I did a line that was straight across, it would make it look flat. But because I'm doing a little bit of an arc like this, starting and going and coming up again, it makes it look a little bit rounder. So that's our knitting. Another one I want to show you is called hatching and cross hatching. And a lot of the old painters and, and drawers used to use this a lot, but it's a really easy technique to, to shade with a pen. And so hatching is when you just go in one direction. So I might want to shade the edges a little bit here. Doesn't matter if you go out of the lines either for making your split pin puppets, because we're gonna be cutting out these shapes later. 
and I'll go in this direction. Say I want the top of the leg really dark, I'll go across this way, then I can go in another direction. So that's hatching and cross hatching. We've done our knitting, we've done our hairy little, little lines and another one might be just wild colouring in. So if you colour in with a texture or a pencil, you might go up and down, up and down. But with a pen, you might get bored. But you can get beautiful lines just from being busy and going in every, every different direction. Doesn't matter if you're neat or not. I love scribbling. These are our four types of pen marks that we're going to um, design our, our first puppet with. Now we're going to plan our puppet. Now, there are so many possibilities for your puppets. There are, you might want to make animals or make up your own monsters or aliens or you might want to make your pets. You might want to make your parents. Who knows what you want to make. This one is just a made up, a made up animal um, kind of monstery thing. It can move around. What you, what you want to think about is that or any part that you want to move, you have to draw as a separate piece. So I've drawn the mouth separate, I've drawn the ears separate, the tail separate. For this uh, cat that I was making, I just did a very simple body, a face or a head that went on the body, and then I've got some paws and legs that can go on the cat later. We'll put this cat together later, but it's a very simple shape. Okay, so now is the, um, the part where we, we've got our four legs. I'm going to make up a body. So I think I might make this body like a big roundish kind of, it's almost like a jelly beanie shape. And then the head. So I have to think about what sort of animal this might be or monster or creature. I'm gonna make mine just have a nice big round face. This is where my split pin will go later when it joins onto the puppet and I'm going to do also a tail. I think a tail is nice. This one's going to have a tail. This is where it will join to the body with the split pin. This tail is going to curl like this. So it will go about here for a tail. Okay, for my animal, I also would like it to have horns. So it's a bit more monstery now. I won't really fit one here. I could just do a little one here. Just a small horn. And this one's going to have wide apart eyes like this. It's going to have a big smile. And I think a really big nose would be good. So I'm gonna draw a big nose like this. The nose can become eyebrows. There we go. So I'm gonna start with the eyebrows can be some of my fuzzy colouring in. I will do some inside these ears. I'm going to do some hatching. So here's my hatching and then some of it I'll do cross hatching. Hatching, cross hatching. I might make the, che the face a little bit hairy. So I'll give it some hair and some, I think some big teeth that stick out. It still looks, doesn't look too scary because he's happy. This is gonna be a bit of a hairy guy with a big, big happy smile and messy teeth. Okay, for his tail, I'm going to want to have lots of hair. So you, you will remember how to do the hair. You might want to do long hair which will be longer lines. I might do scales on the body, like a, he's kind of a part, it's a bit fishy, almost. And I could spend some time coloring in each of these different colors and things. Scales look beautiful when you color them in. So, I've got all of my parts here. I'm gonna start cutting them out. Now I'm gonna use just, just some scissors for this and I'm going to cut around each of my pieces. Sometimes I find it easiest to cut around everything, around the outline of all the shapes to get rid of all the extra paper that's on the sides. cut 
charge out my big body. Sometimes I go over the lines. So around the horns. Around we go. Okay, so I've got everything cut out except for the tail. I'll cut out the tail. Okay, so I've got all my pieces now. I'm going to lay them out, have a look at what they might look like. There's the monster head, one leg, two leg, three leg, four leg, and a tail. And so I might want to have him like this. I might then try what would happen if he looked like if he was standing up this way with, his, with some legs and arms and a head that did this. His tail might be curling up over here. I might prefer that for my monster. So I can try all different, all different ways that I might like it. I might want to try the body up the other way. I might want to have the body over his face. Okay, so this, this is how my little monster's going to go. And then I'll show you how to put the split pins in. I get some thick cardboard to go underneath my puppet for when I push the I push a blade through. This is definitely something that you need to get a grown-up to help you with. If you're a grown-up, you're allowed to do it carefully. So what we want to do is get a Stanley knife. And if your family don't have a Stanley knife, your a grown-up might be able to use scissors and push the scissors through. I use a Stanley knife because I have one, but you could use either. So I do a small slit like this. I get my, my split pin. I pop it through the hole. And then on the back, I split pin. And so that is how a split pin will hold and then it will move. So then the next, this arm I'm going to put on this side, I'm going to do a small incision like this. Pop. I'm going to get my pin, pop it through both layers, turn over and split the pin like that. First little monster, monstery split pin puppet made with a biro pen, a, like a black and a blue pen, and just some old paper. Here's another one that I put together earlier. You'll see it's a really simple um, shape for the body. I've got a little face on there that can move, and I've been drawing kind of like cat paws. I will show you that I've been playing with how, how this cat might go together, but it's the same thing. Even with the thick cardboard, you will need to push your pin through. It's so much thicker than the, um, than the paper we've been using, but it will work just as well. Here it comes through the other side and then I split the pin like this. So you'll be able to, you might choose to have something that only has one split pin. It might be an animal and just its head moves or just one arm moves. It's up to you. You might be like me and you can't stop making them once you start. Okay, here's two, two arms, then I'll pop on the legs. You can always, you can always come back to your puppet once you've put it together 
This one, this leg's going to have trouble fitting on. I could either put it behind or I could cut it. I could cut it a bit thinner. I think with this one, I'm just going to put the leg behind. It doesn't bother me if it's behind. And then I might come back to this cat and keep drawing its, its paws. I might just have some paws on its feet like this. Or I might even use my marker. I've got some different markers and I might want to put some, maybe some stripes on my cat. So it might be a stripy cat. So here we go, we've got a stripy spotty cat whose face moves, tips its head, and it's just made out of cardboard. How cool is that?